Adam Parsons, Sky News. Well, Brexit's an obvious concern for another crucial sector of the UK economy, manufacturing. Now, the sector ends this year in good spirits. For the first time in a decade, both output and order books have been positive every quarter this year. And manufacturing growth is likely to outpace the UK economy for two years on the trot. But there are clouds on the horizon, poor productivity, slowing domestic growth. That word Brexit. Well, how does Stephen Phipson, the new chief executive of the body that represents manufacturers, the EF, feel about it all? Well, luckily he's here to tell me in his first broadcast interview in the job. So, Stephen, good to see you. Thank you. Now, your last job was with the Department for International Trade. Is, is that going to compromise in any way your ability to criticise the government where necessary? Not at all. I think we can be open. And in fact, we're working closely with government. I think, if anything, the, uh, the fact that I was working in Department of International Trade alongside Liam Fox um, helps me to understand the way government thinks and so perhaps we can get the story across more clearly than we could have done otherwise. Does it follow by definition as someone who's been working with Dr Fox you're more optimistic about Brexit than a lot of people? Well there's a, there's a complicated picture of course and the answer to most questions around Brexit in the manufacturing sector is it depends <laughs> and, that's, and that's the big issue. Um, we're very pleased with what's happened so far that we've moved forward the announcement by the Prime Minister was, was, was good, that we're going to move into the transition discussions. We were very, very pleased about the EU nationals point. Um, yeah. We were very concerned. Most manufacturers, most of my members, and we have 20,000 of them represented by EEF, were very concerned at the uh, Christmas period approaching. We have 335,000 EU nationals working in the manufacturing sector and a great deal of uncertainty around their future. Uh, a lot of those are highly skilled individuals, engineers and, uh, and technicians. And so the reassurances we've seen from the Prime Minister about that are particularly welcome at this stage. But we have a long way to go. Well, quite. I mean, what about the transition period? How soon do you expect to get clarity on that? Well, we'd like to see that as soon as possible. For business, in terms of planning, um, as, as you have heard before, businesses have been going through contingency planning. In the absence of any model in front of them, the only plan they can make is for the worst case being a hard Brexit and all the follow-on follow, follow on from that. So to see that transition in place and business as usual, as long as the transition happens, is the next big step as far as we can see. Yeah, now what about the... I mean, as I say, you've been at the Department for International Trade, give us the inside view. What, what is it going to be like? Is it going to be easier than phase one, this next phase? Uh, it's going to be very complicated. In fact, the, the European trade deal is particularly complex because of, uh, we, we start off from a position of complete 100% harmonisation with the EU. Mm. So it's almost a reverse free trade agreement if you think about it. Normally you're trying to get convergence and this time we start from a position of 100% convergence. So we don't want to see divergence going forward and that's going to be the issue. So in terms of manufacturing, you want conditions to be very similar to where they are now but it's going to be a complex negotiation and I think having a clarity on transition that it's business as usual for now is important. The other point I would make Ian is that I think it's very important that industry is consulted during this. When I look at other models around the world and that's one thing I have had the advantage of doing you can see that uh, their industries are part of not the negotiating team but the support team that sits around it yeah. and making sure that involvement is there when the government negotiates is very important. Has that happened as much in the past in the UK? I mean industrialists, I mean certainly in Mrs Thatcher's day industrialists, it was an open door, you know, she welcomed them in. Um, the Germans do it quite a lot. Have, have we let that slip a bit in well, recent we, years? We have very good engagement. I've certainly I've been in the job as you said a week and I already I've had uh, a very good level of engagement with the government and that's continuing on later this week as well. So I would hope to see that continue at a detailed level throughout this phase of transition. I mean, your CV reads like a of who's who of British industry. You work for the likes of Plessy and Smith's Group, great uh, British mm. engineering manufacturing names. I mean, how do you judge the health of the sector right now? We, we're doing well. The, I mean, it's, there's, there's, again, it's a complex sector. At the top end, at the high end, uh, the large manufacturing end, we're doing well on productivity there. But uh, there's a long tail where investment and skills are a key issue. And it's in those areas that we need to focus the investment in order to bring the productivity of, of the country up. So that's important. The other point that doesn't come strongly enough at the moment is the complexity of the supply chains, how linked we are to Europe in many iconic brands that we consider to be British products, our reliance on a clear and free trade with Europe. And that's a critical issue. And finance for engineering and manufacturing? Is, is access to finance still a problem? Um, it's, it, it depends. Again, it depends on which sector you're in. Largely, it's not too bad. Um, and in particular, if we look at exports, the ability to export, 
the, uh, the big push the government's made on export financing to be, enable companies to take advantage of that to mitigate the risk overseas has been a big step forward. All right, Stephen Phipson from the EEF. Good luck in the job and uh, come and see us again soon. Thank you very Thanks. much. Now, the Australian shopping centre giant Westfield, which owns two major malls in London, is to be bought by the French property group Unibail Radamco in a deal worth £25 billion.